So let me now reveal why feeling close to breaking point is great news. So I want to start by telling you an interesting story how coming close to breaking point was one of the best things to ever happen to me. Now, of course, at the time, I didn't see that at all. It's great to have the wisdom of retrospection. So a couple of years ago, I was working three businesses. Um, I'd had one of them for many, many years. Then I added a second and then I added a third. And as you can imagine, by the time I had these three businesses, I was just being pulled in every direction. I was working from the minute I opened my eyes in the morning to the minute I went to bed at night. And at the same time, I was still trying to be a great mum and a great wife to my husband and to my three children. And I became available to everybody all the time. I really felt to be successful and to be what I called a good mum and a good friend and a good wife meant that I needed to be available to everybody all the time, which meant that I had absolutely zero time for myself. And not only did I not have time for myself, I didn't have any headspace for myself. And so what happened was I lost that connection with who I am at. I actually am. So I was so busy keeping everybody else happy that I didn't really know what I wanted anymore. I'd somehow lost track of my own path and wandered off on one that was influenced by everybody around me. And I didn't know any of this while I was in the middle of it. But what I've learned is that sometimes you need to get to a point where it's just so uncomfortable that you're willing to change deep down inside of you some internal habits that get you into this position in the first place. So what happened to me, unfortunately, was my mother passed away early last year. And of course, this was devastating. But it gave me some really amazing perspective because when I first heard that her illness had spread to other areas after 10 years of being managed, I promised myself that day that I would have lunch with my mum every single week. But I didn't. I didn't because I didn't make it a priority. I just kept chasing whatever I was chasing by running all of these businesses and trying to keep people happy. And when I look back now, I realise that it was up to me to choose my priorities, to choose what's important for me so that I didn't get pulled in so many different directions and end up so tired and so exhausted. So if that wasn't enough to wake me up, about six months later, one of my employees in one of my businesses left and this had a huge impact on the business. And now I was brought to my knees. The combination of two of those losses made me stop and say, what are you doing? And I realized that the only way that I was going to change my life is by changing me. And at that point in time, I realized that I was allowing the demands of other people to dictate my life rather than me taking back the control and getting very, very certain on who I am and what's important to me and the way that I wanted to live the rest of my life. So as a result, I am very excited to be helping other women to do that too. So this is why feeling close to breaking point is good news. It takes a storm to switch off the autopilot. So as you know, when a pilot is flying a plane, he actually has it on autopilot most of the time. And when everything's going smoothly, he can just sit back and relax and doesn't have to control the plane himself or herself. And most people spend 90% of their time acting on autopilot or unconsciously. And the reason for this is that our habits come from our subconscious mind rather than our conscious mind. So you can consciously choose to do something, but what you do most of the time is that actually happening unconsciously based on your past beliefs. So you're not stopping to think about what you do each day. You just do what you've always done. You just react in the same way to the same sorts of triggers. So if you are doing so much that you feel overwhelmed and anxious, it means that you're living your life on autopilot. So you react, which is another way of saying you act again in the same way each time you're presented with certain situations. So for example, every time a client calls, you answer the phone straight away, possibly breaking the flow of what you're trying to work on. 
or a client asks whether they can book in with you and really you'd plan to do something for yourself or with your family in that time but you have this desperation that you don't want to lose that client and so you say yes and you book them in even though you didn't really want to. So you end up resenting them but ultimately you're too afraid to say what you really want. So these habits are caused by your conditioning and while you're comfortable, you're unlikely to change them. So feeling close to breaking point shakes you awake so you can notice what you're doing and most importantly, why you're doing it. Only then can you start to choose what you want to think, say and do rather than keep doing what you've always done and then you can change your life. So pain changes behaviour. You can see here a classic example. This little girl, if she pulls this hot water down on herself and is burnt, she will never ever do that again. It's a very hard lesson to learn, but unfortunately, even as adults, that's often the way we continue to learn is through pain. You can read all the ideas and concepts in the world, but if you wanna change your life, permanent change comes from a powerful trigger like pain, in my case, grief and loss. So to replace an old habit with a new one, you need strong motivation. So if you've come to this webinar feeling overwhelmed, feeling unhappy, feeling anxious, then you can use this trigger, this trigger to make change. Now you might know this saying by Tony Robbins, people will do more to avoid pain than they will to gain pleasure. Studies show that when people are given a choice between avoiding immediate pain or gaining immediate pleasure, they choose avoiding pain. I went to a conference a few months ago and we were told to sit there and put our hands out either side of us, one with the palm facing up and one with the palm facing down. And the purpose of this was that because we were next to other people, with one hand we would be trying to grab the fingers of the person next to us, while in the other hand we were trying to avoid being grabbed. And it was so fascinating because the majority of the people in the room were so quick to pull that hand away so that they avoided the pain that they didn't even think to actually grab the other person's fingers, trying to avoid the pain rather than gaining the pleasure. Now this impulse stems from the reptilian part of our brain that is only interested in keeping us alive. Pain is a threat to our survival, which is why it's a powerful way to get our attention. The other reason that it's so important to make the most of this breaking point is because it's going to give you contrast. So if this white flower was against the white image, you wouldn't be able to see and appreciate the flower. And by the same token, feeling close to breaking point first will increase the level of calmness and peace that you can experience because of the contrast. So the breaking point is a blessing, even though you can't see it at the time. Now here is how to apply this in your situation. Let's say, for example, you're doing too much and you have no time for yourself and you feel overwhelmed. If this is you, can you please write in the chat box now, that's me, because I'm very interested to hear how many women out there are feeling like this. I feel like it's a lot. Yes, yes, that's me, that's me. So the first step is to take back control of your life. It's time for a stock take of everything you do and most importantly, why you do it. Then you can decide if you choose to keep it, stop it or modify it. So you'll see on your follow along worksheet, now is the place where you can start to take your stock take. So here's an example of how you can do it. You can make up a table like this where you've got the thing that it is that you do then you think about why you do it, and then you can decide whether you want to keep doing it, whether you want to stop doing it, or maybe you want to modify it in some way. So I've used some really simple examples. What I used to do is answer my phone all the time. I was always available. And I realized the reason I did it is I actually thought people expected me to. 
And of course, that's not the case at all. People understand that you're not always available to take a phone call. So that wasn't real. And now, of course, I just check my messages and respond to them twice per day so that I can spend the rest of the day doing what's most important to me and my goals. I drive my son to rehearsals and the reason I do that is I love him having the opportunity to be in musicals which he absolutely loves. But I've made a modification to this. I've made friends with other mums who are also involved and we share the rides. I used to attend events that I didn't enjoy and I realised that I did that because I didn't want to let people down. So I've stopped going and it's such a relief and I'm sure nobody misses me. I used to go to yoga once a week and I only just started that as well after my mum passed away when I had this perspective of making the most of my life. I didn't think I deserved the time before. It really calms my mind and now I've increased that to two times per week. So make sure that you are taking some notes on your follow along worksheet and you can work on this task so that you can think about these things that you do and why you do it.